bit later on. Stay with us. Now we're getting ready for more action as Butterbean uh, leaves the uh, ring. We'll get our next fight right in as we <laughs> just uh, we get one out and run the next one right in. That's the way it works here on the Even Money card promoted by Top Rank. Next up, a fight we've really been looking forward to. Uh, this figures is another action fight. Scotty Olson, a Canadian, getting a chance to finally avenge a defeat that he suffered back in the Olympic Games of 1988 against Michael Carbajal. And this again figures as a very much an action fight as we take a look at a kid who's really a good kid. Scotty, Scotty Olson, friendly and a good fighter as well out of Canada. Only five feet tall. His last fight, June of 96, a 12-round jaw with Rudy Adanio in Canada. Was undefeated last year and also undefeated in 1995. With that head shaved clean. Across the ring, his opponent already in the ring, Michael Carbajal, 44-3. His last fight, January 18th in Las Vegas, when he lost the IBF title to Mauricio Pastrana, a night in which he seemed sluggish. He did not have his same fiery demeanor that he had in the ring. And as he says, that wasn't me in there. You'll see the real me against Scotty Olson. Well, we shall find out. As so we take a look at the tail of the tape, same age, big advantage in uh, height and reach for Michael Carbajal. And the rules of this fight, IBA, 10 points to the winner, three knockdowns in one round ends it, no standing eight. Fighter can only be saved by the bell in the last round. The referee alone can stop the fight. Three rounds for the accidental foul rule. All right, let's go right up to ring announcer Mark Vero and get this next fight underway. Ladies and gentlemen, Top Rank Incorporated in association with TVKO and Budweiser, this Bud's for you, presents the third championship bout of the evening, 12 rounds for the vacant IBA Light Flyweight Championship of the World. Ring officials assigned by the International Boxing Association, President Cy Young Great Dean Chance, Supervisor and Ratings Chairman Norm Logden. Your judges at ringside are from Austin, Texas, George Garland, from Muncie, Indiana, Gary Merritt, and from Dallas, Texas, Jack Woodruff. Your referee for this event from Edinburgh, Texas, David Avalos. Introducing now the principals, first in the red corner to my right, wearing the red trunks, white trim, he weighs in at 107 and three quarter pounds, his professional record, 31 victories, two defeats, Two draws, he has 22 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Here is Scotty Bulldog Olsen. Olsen. His opponent in the blue corner wearing the white trunks, red accessories. He also weighs in at 107 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 44 victories, three defeats. He has 29 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Phoenix, Arizona, the former IBF junior flyweight champion of the world, the former WBA junior lightweight champion of the world, introducing El Caballero, Michael. of the world. Okay, guys, we've already gone over the rules. I want to do a clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands. Touch gloves and return your corners. Take it through. All right, since 1988, Scotty Olson has wanted a chance to get back at Michael Carbajal. He said he couldn't believe it when they raised Carbajal's hands in the Olympic Games against him. He's wanted to fight him as a professional. Tonight he gets the chance. Here we go, round one. David Avalos is the third man in the ring. Carbajal, before the loss to Mauricio Pastrana, had lost only in his career to Chiquita Gonzalez, a, a great light flyweight champion from Mexico. Carbajal, since then, had been 6-0 in 1995, and then 6-0 again in 1996, and then most unexpectedly lost the title to Mauricio Pastrana. Olsen, by contrast, only had two fights in 1996, comes in with a nine-month playoff. 
and believes that is the reason he got the fight. That if he had momentum, this fight would not be up there. But he took the chance, went against the odds because he wants Carvajal that badly. But you wonder, having not fought for nine months, if that would be detrimental to Scotty Olsen. You've got to think that there could be some ring rust. It could be a stamina problem later in the fight. Him up. But he wanted the fight so badly, he factored all that in and said, I'll take it. Scotty Olsen is a straight-ahead pressure fighter, but says he'll have to vary his tempo tonight because the Carvajal is a smart fighter in there, and if he just gives him one look, then the Carvajal will lead him up. So he says he's going to have to vary the way that he fights him and vary that tempo that he brings to the fight. Carvajal told us yesterday he feels like the old Michael Carvajal. Well, indeed, if he's the old Michael Carvajal, uh, recall what happened in March, four years ago of 1993, when he had that classic knockout win over Chiquita Gonzalez in Las Vegas. Also now trying to rough up Carvajal. Olsen probably would like to turn this into a pier sixer. He'd love to disrupt the rhythm and the reach of Carvajal, get inside, create a slow, non-rhythmic pace to this bout. You see the elbows by Olsen as he comes in. You see Carvajal wants to keep him at the end of his jab the entire fight. Surprising that with his uh, Olympic Games background and his very fine record, I mean only two defeats in 35 fights, that Scotty Olsen has never had a chance to fight for a major a world championship in his career. Most unusual that somewhere along the line, with all of his sanctioning organizations, that he wouldn't have gotten a championship uh, shot. He's been too dangerous of an opponent. That's not very possible. He says tonight, though, is everything he's worked for in his career. Getting a chance to fight a guy that he classified as a legend, Michael Carvalho. <laughs> if Carvalho brings more fire to the table tonight. You know, he seems so strangely detached in that fight with Mauricio Pastrana. He hardly seemed interested. And created basically a shocking upset loss that night. Now Carvajal trying to get that jab to work. First round comes to an end. Basically a feel out first round as the fighters try to gauge each other's tempos and styles. Danny Carvajal in the corner, the brother of Michael Carvajal. Carbajal is a veteran. Not much in the way of animation or very calm demeanor in the corner from Danny. Let's see a little bit more fire, maybe. Round two, Scotty Olsen in the red trunks. They're fighting tonight for the IBA Light Flyweight Championship, the, the latest of the organizations to uh, join the jurisdictional chaos of boxing, the International Boxing Association. So this title is uh, vacant, and they're fighting it out for it. It would be complete folly for Scotty Olsen to stay at long range against Michael Carbajal, as he did in the first round. He's going to have to become more aggressive since he's given up five inches in height and three inches in reach. And he needs to bob and weave, get inside, and then do his work. Get inside, slip that jab of Carvajal. The Carvajal camp feels that the uppercut will be effective against Scotty Olsen. Olsen backing off a little this round and now coming forward, but we're seeing already some of what we talked about in the opening moments there, trying to vary the look of his attack against Carvajal. This is the way Scotty Olsen is going to fight. Back him into a corner, go for the body. Starting to put his body now into the punches of Scotty Olsen. Getting the head down so the body is right in front of him. Look for the uppercut from Carvajal, though, in this situation. There it is. When they're in the middle of the ring, 
Michael Carbajal has, has the distinct advantage. Olsen trying to club with him here and go over the top with his right hand over the Carbajal jab. A lot on the line for both guys. A bad performance and either guy could go way down. Now that Chiquita Gonzalez has retired, Carbajal says the big fight's out there for him. If he can win here tonight, would be against Ricardo Lopez. He'd like to fight uh, Lopez. Or he said he could move up to 112. And he, he seemed particularly interested in Yuri Arbachikov. But he would like to fight Arbachikov, who's been an outstanding champion for years, and then take on Mark Sharp Johnson. I'm not sure anyone's really anxious to fight Mark Sharp Johnson. He is an outstanding flyweight champion, no question about it. He's one of the best boxers in the world today. But we do see more of the guys of this weight class forced to fight the best because of the absence of marquee contenders out there. So those fights he talked about could happen if Carvajal regains old form. Chases after Carbajal pins him up against the ropes and tries to bang away. Got that left hand in off the chin of Carbajal and wow. underneath the punches of Michael Carbajal in the Hang final on. second. Yeah. All right, here's Scotty Olson. Now you're coming to his corner and his trainer, his former veteran Let's get fighter about. Jerome Coffey. We come to fight Scotty Olson. Let me tell you something. You see what you did? You see what you did? Three jabs come back. Right hand. Look. You start right hand to the head, then go to the body level, go to the top. Expect this guy to answer back. Yeah. One, two, three shots. Roll, roll. Mm -hmm. Hands high. You with me? Mm -hmm. Hands high. Mm -hmm. Keep doing what you're doing. Relax. We do this all day. We do this all day. He ain't nothing special, dog. This is our time. This way? Yeah. Keep doing what you're doing. Hands up. You with me? Do what you do. Spirited advice from uh, Jerome Coffey, who was a very fine fighter in his day. Bell for round three. Scheduled for 12. IBA 108-pound title on the line. It's vacant right now. Carbajal in the white trunks. Scotty Olsen in red. Scotty Olsen's going to win this fight. He's got to live up to his nickname, Bulldog. He's got to come in a lot more and become a lot more aggressive than he's been the first two rounds. He's trying to do that here early in the third. He slipped, but had Carvajal smothered. Carvajal nearly took advantage. Carvajal covered up very well in the corner there and is able to side wheel out of there. Carvajal working his jab to some effect. Successful in keeping Olsen off, at least so far here in the third round. Good right hand downstairs by Carvajal, and Olsen continues to hunt inside. He, he does a great job with that right hand of the body. Uh, Dave, I did a fight of his with uh, Marlon Baby Diaz about a year ago, and he just beat the kid down with, with right hands to the body all night. It's a sharp punch, especially when you're punching down at your opponent. To get that in, it's pretty uncanny. This is Olsen's territory here, and both fighters are getting a chance to impose their stylistic will. You know, Carvajal seems willing, Doug, to, to fight at short range with the Olsen. He does, and I, I think to his detriment. Fighters sometimes try to prove a little bit of the macho element there. But is he fighting Scotty Olsen's fight inside? He is. Scotty Olsen has more, you know, he's five feet tall. He has a little bit more leverage. He's shorter. He wants to get inside. Carbajal should stay away at a jab and pop shoot that right hand. Carbajal should. He's trying to prove probably that he can fight on the inside as well as Olsen. Take Olsen's game away. It's a, a thing fighters do that puzzles their trainers to go in. Is that is part of the human nature that plays in. Now, fighting is a macho sport. The fans who have been treated to an enormously entertaining array of fights so far here tonight asking for a little more action now from these two combatants. 
There are no chess fans in this place tonight. <laughs> greedy after what we've seen so far. They're throwing punches, they're just not landed. Good right hand by Olsen. And Olsen banging to the body. Keep working. Chopping right hand by Karma Hoffman. Brings the uppercut in. Bangs the right to the body and then backs out. End of round three. Come to fight, guy. You realize he's been fighting since 1979. An amazing guy. We'll see him against Janelle Hernandez later. Right now, we've got round number four of this 108-pound uh, title bout between Michael Carbajal and the White Trunks. Scotty Olson of Canada in red. Olson 31-2-2 and two in his career. Carbajal 34-3. Carvajal has lost only to Chiquita Gonzalez on two occasions, and uh, he has lost, of course, his last fight, Mauricio Pastrana. Interesting thing about that fight is that Pastrana classified Carvajal as his idol and, in fact, named his two children after Michael and his brother Danny. That's the, that's the names of uh, Pastrana's children. And now Scotty Olsen calls him a legend. Maybe that's a bad vibe for Carvajal. <laughs> to the body. Dave, how do you think Olsen looks? I mean, does he look like a rusty fighter? Do you feel his punches are sharp in there tonight against Carbajal? I think he has the right idea of how to fight Carbajal. He's motivated. His punches look sharp when he can get inside. He's hunting very well. He goes low there. He's rolling, and it does not look rusty to this point. When he stays on top, Carbajal, he's very effective. But when Carbajal managed to, to start landing those jabs, that's when Scotty Olsen gets dominant. The left hook by Olsen, he pinions Carbajal in the corner. Although Carbajal is not making much of an attempt really to fight at long range against Olsen. He should get out right run. now. He should spin and get out. Olsen's landing some very good shots in here. Some good hooks, some meaningful body work. Carbajal trying to set up a bomb in there, but he doesn't have to take a lot of punches to set up his offense. I, I believe, from what right. I'm seeing in the last two rounds, that Michael Carvajal thinks he can win this fight fighting on the inside with Scotty Olsen. There's no reason for it. Why doesn't he just stay outside, jab? Does he have the legs to stay on the outside with Scotty Olsen? That's the question about Carvajal. There are those in boxing that think he's past his prime. This is a very critical fight for him. Those punches missed. And Olsen trying double hooking, and Olsen beginning to bring some real offense to the floor here in round number four. Olsen landing the body work that may pay dividends later in this fight. Continues to look for the opening, bang with the hook, and has had himself a very nice round four. I believe that Scotty Olsen is getting bolder with each passing minute. Let him go, let him go. Help. Four rounds in the book. Scotty Olsen goes back to his corner. Probably will get a friendlier reception from his trainer, Jerome Coffey. and drop some off. Come on, I need some intent. Let's go to work. This is Scotty Olsen doing what your own coffee says. Get inside and drop something off. Gets the hook going. Good hook downstairs, then goes low. He's getting his head down, firing shots. He's busy. Carbo Hall's not. That's where the round goes. That was easily 
Olsen's best round if he continues to fight like that. And now the action picking up here. Scotty Olsen in the red trunks coming off a very good round four. Once again, now he has Carvajal pinned against the ropes. How brave will Olsen get here? Will Carvajal catch him coming in? Referee is David Avalos. He's had a relatively easy time in this fight so far compared to what we saw a couple of fights back with Jesse James Leha's grueling roughhouse fight with uh, Joel Perez. And now Carvajal begins to answer some of Scotty Olsen's punches, but Scotty Olsen has a very determined look on his face. He's very much into the fight. We are seeing some nice ebb and flow in this battle. Carvajal sometimes dominating outside, and Scotty Olsen doing the hard labor inside. This fight is progressing exactly the way it was drawn up on paper. Carvajal pushing that jab and then unloading that right hand to the body once again. And you know, you can really hear that punch when it lands. He gets the full reach, he's punching down. Also doing some nice work on the inside. Carvajal dominates from the middle of the ring. Well, the two have been also right. been the one fighting like he's been on a mission up till this point. Pushing the action. Not as successful, though, in this round as he was in the previous round, insofar as landing the clean, crisp punches was concerned. And Carvajal didn't do much in round four. When Carvajal moved a little bit this round, he was able to negate some of that pressure for by Olsen, and there's a good shot downstairs again. That's going to add up later. I like that punch from Michael Carvajal. That right hand of the body is a terrific shot. This is Carvajal's best round. Right, right, let him go, step back. He's finding Olsen with his right hands, and he's jabbing very well. And he's keeping the fight in the middle of the ring. Olsen doing his best, but he gets caught with a right hand there that rocks him back on his heels momentarily. but the referee will say no knockdown. Scotty looking a little weary in there as he got up. Five rounds in and a much better round for Michael Carbajal and one in which Olsen seemed to be wearing down a little on that fifth. If you want him to hit you, you just keep waiting. What I need from you, Scotty Olsen, is two and three. Breathe deep. We fight way. We run six miles in the mountain. We ain't tired. We not tired. Take a deep breath. Now you listen to me now. I need you popping the jab two and three times. A stark right. contrast in demeanor of the two corners. Well, Jerome Coffey realizes. Realizes. <laughs> and here's why the difference between four and five that tremendous right hand downstairs by Carvajal delivered with his height and full ferocity and when Olsen took some of those shots he had to reload and it drove him back as we begin round six Scotty Olsen in the red trunks Michael Carvajal in the white I'm Rich Morata along with Dave Von Temple and Doug Krikori in ringside at the Corpus Christi Memorial Coliseum. He don't like this fight for the IBIA and light flyweight title. And later on, of course, Azuma Nelson, legendary world champion, really one of the all-time greats in boxing, taking on Gennaro Hernandez, himself a former world champion. And what is uh, seen by just about everybody is a very closely contested bout. You know, at Carvajal, there's not many people, I, I really can't think of anybody that throws the right hand to the body the way that he does from long range. It's actually a straight punch, Dave. Can it's he straight and it goes downhill at the end. It's a very good punch. It's a very unique shot by him. And it lands right in the rib cage area or near the kidneys, and it is a telling blow. 
Olsen has been too cautious once again. And once again, Carvajal is starting to dominate it. Well, we're seeing Olsen actually backing off in this round. And Carvajal asserting himself with some power. Olsen with some isolated good shots. You see the jab there by Carvajal. This has been a good action-paced fight. It had its moments of being slow earlier, but it has heated up here. I think the difference is that uh, Carvajal has more looks and more moves than Olsen. Over the course of time, you know exactly how Olsen is going to come at you. Olsen was actually trying to jab with Carvajal there. Now Carvajal from long range beginning to pick him apart. Why is Olsen trying to box him? Why isn't Olsen charging in like he did when he was so effective? Why the change in strategy? He's getting hit with the jab on the way in, and he's unable to bother to weave as he was able to do earlier. Away the good advancement of Olsen. Pick him up, pick him Olsen needs to bang to the body in close. There's that wicked right hand to the body of Carvajal. And he brings it up over the top. Olsen showing some wear. Face beginning to look a little bit jaded in there. He's showing a lot of respect for Carvajal's power. He's really showing. Carvajal dominating the sixth round. Picking Olsen apart at long range in this round. And the fight going very much in the direction now of the little hands of stone, Michael Carvajal. He clearly looks much better tonight than he did against Mauricio Pastrana. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's three court goals come from Corpus Christi's finest, the Palace Vince Club, right here in Corpus Christi. Comienza cuando puede al cuerpo, eh, chingate lo pronto al cuerpo y lo después. Every time you start going, I need the jab. You with me? Nah, you're taking a break. Got it, we can win this one, Jerry. Let's win it. Let's go. Second down. All right, here we go now into round number seven. It has been two real good rounds for Michael Carvajal back to back after uh, Scotty Olsen had appeared to uh, be coming on very strong in the fourth. But Carvajal immediately turned it back around in his favor and really has uh, dominated in the last two rounds. Starting with the jab on the outside in round five, the good right hand downstairs, the ability to stay outside, and he's not trying to prove the macho point as much as he was earlier when he voluntarily fought inside with Scotty Olsen. Now Olsen looking a little more intent upon trying to do what he did that was successful for him in the previous round, uh, round four, when he had managed to pin Carvajal in the corner and pin him up against the ropes and land flurries of punches. I'm not sure, no matter what he tries, Rich, he's just being overmatched right now. This is when he's at his best, when he gets Carvajal pinned in the ropes. That's a pretty good left hook inside to the body by Olsen. a fighter who feels that he could win no matter what his strategy was. I mean, fighting outside, fighting inside, trying to bomb up or trying to outbox him. Well, he's proving right now that he's just a better fighter than Scotty Olsen. He hits harder, he's quicker, stronger. He's doing just about what he wants to do with it. The only time he gets in trouble is when he gets pinned against the ropes. Scotty Olsen has not lost the fight since February of 94. He dropped a 10-round decision to Jorge Roman at the Great Western Forum in Los Angeles. It was on the uh, Chiquita Gonzalez-Carvajal undercard. He was supposed to fight 
the winner of that fight, but he ended up losing to Roman. What happened that night is he broke his hand. He broke his right hand and basically became a one-handed fighter, lost the fight, and lost out on an opportunity to fight for a championship. Now he's trying to rally, Doug. He certainly is, but once again, he throws punches, but they don't seem to be doing any bother whatsoever to Michael Carbajal. Michael Carbajal has a cut over his left eye right. Yes, he does, and it's dripping down very rapidly. It is on the left eye, looks like the corner of the left eye. You can see the blood clearly dripping down the left side of his face. Sometimes uh, that gives a, a fighter a second wind. If you see that blood in your opponent's face, Doug, that can, uh, well, that can get the endorphins going inside of you, I think. That's for sure. down the left side of his face. Now, standing by in the locker room of the challenger for world championship honors tonight, Gennaro Hernandez is Dave. Mom, I love you, and I'll be home with the belt. Good luck tonight, Chickenito. Back to ringside. Thanks. There you see the work being done on the eye cut of Michael Carvajal. We'll see if that opens up and becomes a real factor in this fight. It was not opened up by a headbutt. At least there was no ruling to that effect, and no one indicated that they saw a headbutt. I didn't, and... Uh, so Carbajal now is in a bit of a situation here where he's going to have to really make sure that he can last the 12 rounds and uh, continue to maintain his advantage. If Scotty Olsen wants to win this fight, right now he has to go after Carbajal, throw some wild punches, take some chances. He can't be conservative. Rough him up probably and get his hand on that eye. And what is he doing right now? He's boxing with him and backing off. Well, Scotty Olsen cannot win this fight backing away. No, he's misguided strategy, especially when uh, Mr. Carbohol's eye is bleeding profusely as it is right now. Gennaro Hernandez looking forward to his title attempt tonight against Azuma Nelson. Seems very confident. What was the uh, atmosphere in that locker room, Dave? Pretty upbeat, Rich. They're ready to go. They heard the music background there, and he made some comment on it. Very calm and uh, quietly confident group, just like uh, the type of person Gennaro Hernandez is. Very classy guy. And, of course, our main event still to come. Now, swelling under the left eye of Scotty Olsen. So both fighters having trouble with their left eyes. Carvajal cut, but uh, Olsen a little bit of swelling underneath. The cut so far is not a deterrent to Carbohal. Carbohal putting some oomph in his punches now. We're seeing Carbohal going for it a little bit more now. The hook is there, the right hand, he seems to be measuring the right hand to the head, punching down at Olsen, and he's kicked it up a notch here. That right hand, last right hand, just bouncing off the glistening head of Scotty Olsen. We are getting to the point in the fight where we may see the layoff of Scotty Olsen get back to hurt him. End of round eight now, he's got a long way to go. Two right hands to the body by Carvajal. He still had one arm free as he took advantage of it. this round what he should have done and that is to go out there really all hang out trying to flurry here now at the end of the round but the punch is mostly blocked by Carbajal in the corner as we come to the end of the round Don't worry, I don't 
el upper adentro, el upper adentro, el right upper, ahí lo agarra. Keep stepping to this guy, Scotty. Drop the shots off. He wants to give it to you, but you gotta take it. Come on, baby. This is for everybody that loves you, man. Let's get this thing. Let's go get it. This is our time. This is our time. Jerome Coffey trying to do his best new Rockney to try to encourage his charge, Scotty Olson, as we begin round number nine. New Rockney didn't have any five feet tall running backs. That's the difference. <laughs> we see that Olson does come out right after Coffey's inspirational words in the beginning of every round and then has some trouble sustaining. would just be well suited to, and well served in this fight now to just try to really get rough. Try to make it a rough house fight, grab Carbajal if you can, throw him up against the ropes, try to rough him up and turn it into a ball. He tries to do that. What happens is that when Carbajal hits him with a couple jabs on the way in, Olsen has to regroup and then charge again. So the jabs by Carbajal have been very effective at disrupting the rhythm and the rough house tactics of Scotty Olsen. does a lot of his good work when he gets inside. Carbajal not letting him get there. Carbajal is winning this fight. How do you think he is looking, though, in terms of where he stands in the boxing hierarchy at this point in world championship type contention? I think he is winning this fight in a way that would be good enough to get him some other bouts because Olsen brought some stature in here. With Scotty Olsen is he's not aggressive. And Dave, he is trying to get in once in a while, but not too often. Too much respect for Michael Carbajal. And of course, those early punches, he got hit with very good shots. I don't think he wants to get hit again. Carbajal bleeding again and blinking a little now in that left eye. So probably getting some of that blood in the eye. You have to wonder how much is in that Olsen gas tank, too. He comes out strong in the round, then has his low period. And he ran into a right hand there from Carvajal, but he has been a little more active in this round than he was in the previous couple. Also looking a little better here in this round. Carvajal's eyes bleeding badly again. Carvajal very lucky it's round nine, not round three in this bout. That took by Carvajal from long range, but Olsen's had a much better round. Yeah, and Carvajal very bothered by that cut, picked it himself with his glove. Carvajal's trunks beginning to turn a crimson color. Olsen with a right hand, backs off, end of the round, three rounds to go. Crowd, as you can hear, not totally happy with the performance of the fighters, but they're showing the marks of battle. Certainly, that's the case of Michael Carbajal. Hey. No, don't get careless on him, man. Well, it's about as stark a contrast as you can get for two corners. I mean, there's not been word one hardly spoken in Carvajal's corner of that round when you could hear Jerome Coffey halfway across Lovely. the ring. Lovely. Screaming at Scotty Olson as we begin round in number 10. Scotty Olson in the red trunks, Michael Carbajal in white. They're fighting for the light flyweight title of the IBA. That's 108 pounds. And let me ask my two uh, esteemed and astute analyst partners here how they have this fight scored. 
Again, a three-point edge for Carver Hall here. Uh, some good early rounds by Olsen, and Carver Hall starting to open it up in the middle round. I have Carver Hall by five points. Only way he can lose this fight now is to be knocked out, and I don't think Scotty Olsen is going to come close to knocking him out. That's Carver Hall to do just about what he wants to with him right now. He's got Olsen going back. Olsen not able to just get himself back in. I think that the stamina problem is there and prominent for Scotty Olsen here. Down he goes from a left hook to the body. A body shot puts Scotty Olsen down. Working effectively to the body. He may not beat the count. Rolling over. Can he get up? He cannot. Count is 10 and out. Knockout. Carvajal, 10th round with the first knockdown of the fight and a body shot to boot. Well, we talked about the fatigue of Olsen, along with the fact that Carvajal was coming on, and from the outside, he picked him apart, then went downstairs, and he's got thunder in the left hand. We saw it upstairs against Chiquita Gonzalez, and we saw it downstairs here. That, that punch right there showed why Scotty Olsen stayed safely away throughout this fight from Michael Carvajal. Carvajal was really attacking just moments before that very well to the body. We saw Olsen moving straight back. He's winded, then he takes that shot on the way in. He's coming in. He comes in too straight. The Carvajal makes him pay. Olsen just can't quite get up. Watch, he walks right into it. He was trying to throw that right hand. He telegraphed it, and Carvajal uncannily timed his left hook. As the fight progressed, see the body shots there? He was landing before, right. so he was attacking very well to the body right before the knockout. Scotty Olsen was being dominated. It was inevitable that this was going to happen eventually. Scotty Olsen took his own mouthpiece out on the way down. He decided not to quite get up. I think he realized at that point he'd had enough. He's a courageous fighter, but he's not in the same league as Michael Carvajal. And Michael Carvajal showed tonight good, Mike. that he has good. a lot of fights left in him. And he won this in the type of manner you want to if you want to call out the big fighters in your division. All right, Michael, or rather Mark Biro has the official particulars now on the Michael Carbajal victory. Mark, if you will. Ladies and gentlemen, the time, one minute, five seconds of the 10th round, the winner by knockout and new IBA light flyweight champion of the world. Well, a fantastic finish by Michael Carvajal as he wins by TKO in the 10th round. Three terrific body shots preceded that final left hook to the body, which just took all of the wind and all of the fight out of Scotty Olsen. And as we saw in that third replay there, that third view, he actually, as he was going down, removed his own mouthpiece, which is basically...